This is a little bit of conversation that I like to call why Occupy should run for president. And it starts with me comparing and contrasting three rebel groups, three activist movements. The first of which is Al Qaeda. Now, due to media posturing, we don't really think of Al Qaeda as a rebel group or a revolutionary movement because we're very quick to label them terrorists. And they are. But that's the only name we give them. They are revolutionaries. And the process that they use to be revolutionaries is revolutionary in and of itself. The command structure, instead of a government which you can fight, or a country that you can take down, was splintered. The people that they recruited were came from everywhere. And members of Al-Qaeda could be found embedded in just about any city. That's what made them so hard to take down. But, Al-Qaeda forming in the, in the 80s took almost two decades to actually reach any level of notoriety with the bombings of nightclubs in Britain and Europe and the exploding buses and cars and then most notably 9-11 whether or not you believe that Al-Qaeda is responsible for 9-11 you have to admit that what they've done and how long it's taken us to take them down as a country because yes, I would say that they're, they're pretty much history at this point. Definitely speaks for the revolutionary structure of their organization. The second organization is WikiLeaks, which emerged a lot quicker and did a different kind of damage and was, in a sense, a different kind of terrorist because they didn't attack citizens, they attacked government, they attacked dictators. But, and while their processes were revolutionary and the way that they attacked these by using information in the information society to bring down big governments and big dictation, they followed the old format of an organization. And therefore, it was fairly easy to take Julian Assange down <laughs> for any government that was interested. And we see how easy that was. We can tell because he's still in a legal mess. Within days of him launching the attack on America to expose our corruption, or, I'm sorry, our government's corruption, funding was cut. And this is where Anonymous jumped in. Anonymous has existed for around the same amount of time and they're just now really making big steps. When they jumped in a couple years ago on Scientology, it blew Scientology out of the water. There are now so many more people that doubt that Scientology is reasonable or viable as a religion. It, it's been opened up. You know, the secret documents, the secret ideas about their, their alien lords and demons inside of us that they claim to exist, the the sci-fi narrative that um, Ron L. Hubbard, sorry, Ron L. Hubbard is cooked up and tried to market as a religion to blackmail celebrities and make fucking money. Now, that's just the beginning of the iceberg when it comes to Anonymous. They've done so many more things. They've responded to the WikiLeaks scandal by shutting down companies. And the most interesting thing is that while they did this, and while they started the Occupy movement that's taken over this country and many other countries around the world, they've done it without leadership, without representatives, without a president or a vice president, without somebody to take down like Julian Assange. In a way, they splintered themselves even more than Al-Qaeda had, making them even harder to fight. 
Because even if you were to arrest or kill half of the members of Anonymous, if you could somehow find out who they are and take them down, or associated members, or associated peoples, or occupy protesters, there would still be a whole lot of people, and you wouldn't have taken out the head. Because there is no head. It's divided amongst the protesters. Our government, as well as all the other governments around the world, and all the other governments have been since the times of monarchy, are headed by a leader. But Anonymous isn't. And Anonymous proves that people, common people working together without some any sort of leadership structure, can formulate a plan and execute it faster than traditional organized groups and better. And their plans are better too. Prime example of how much more effective anonymous is than the US government at handling problems is child pornography. You would think it would be really easy to take down child pornography rings and our government is very against them. But it took an, it it took waiting on anonymous to jump into the fray to really even even disrupt the child pornography rings that exist on the internet. I'm not saying there's none left, but they're scared, and they have to they have to hide. They have to hide a lot more now than they used to, because now there is a watchful. See, my friend, my friend Chris would have said if I had said watchful eye that this would suddenly become an Illuminati-based video. But, whatever. <laughs> if you believe in the Illuminati, they use uh, the concept of anonymity the same way that Anonymous does. And if they exist, that is a powerful tactic. And clearly, it's working for them very well. But it's also working very well for Anonymous. And suddenly we see a rival. Suddenly we see the sparks of a revolution. Suddenly we see all of these revolutionary groups adopting similar ideals and building on them. And building up in a way that might actually start a revolution that we can be proud of. That might actually work as opposed to the revolutions of the hippie era. But to me revolution isn't just about tearing things down. It's about building things up as well. What if we were to build a government structure that was based on Anonymous's layout? It would be simple to aggregate the opinions of the, the American populace using the internet. To build laws, to build a structure, to build a government that way, instead of having representatives. Because anything that has a leader, anything that has a head, can be blackmailed and corrupted. Exactly the way that Julian Assange was exactly the way that corrupt politicians are. But how do you bribe the entire population of America? Is it even possible? And clearly you can try to brainwash us. But can you actually force us to do what you want? No. No, you can't. And that's why Occupy. That's why the American population should be the next president of the United States. We the people need to take over. Because clearly, those people aren't doing their jobs. And they definitely aren't doing their jobs well. And I think we could do a lot better. Me and everyone out there has their ideas. And through the intelligence of crowdsourcing, we could come up with better ideas than our government can. And if we can do better, then why don't we? And that's why 2012 is going to be the year of Occupy. 2012 is going to be the year of Anonymous. And 2012 is going to be the year that the American people finally take back their government. Now who's with me?